So then he moves on to uh, wanting to focus on the Bible. Weird that a a Christian philosopher would want to do this, but uh, here we go. So he says in this chapter, he's going to be focusing on what the Bible teaches concerning the problem of evil. Following J. Adams, very good example. Where should we turn to? The Bible. Why? Because that's where we say that uh, comes all the, 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 the um, that's the proper sola, uh, the sola scriptura. We, we go there for all the pertinent information as it applies to our faith. Uh, it's it's the, the sole place that we can turn to, and it's there that we want to find the justification for this very important worldview question. So his book is itself rather unusual in this respect. Uh, he's applying that to um, how most books uh, on the problem of evil deal with kind of the logical or the experimental matters without much focus on the Bible, uh, which uh, seems, again, odd, but it seems to be... Uh, the, the, the area that we want to, I think, uh, talk down to unbelievers on is we, we again say, oh, let's, let's, let's have this shared common basis of, of science or of logic. And so uh, you find most uh, people writing on the theodicy wanting to, to, to talk on that level because uh, they believe in a, a kind of the shared neutral ground that we have um, with everybody in the world. So we all experience evil. So uh, l- let's agree on, on where we can find agreement. And so that's what he's saying uh, we can't do because as a presuppositionalist, uh, he doesn't um, believe that we have that type of neutral common ground. And so he says, as he's indicated earlier, he does not object to using extra biblical data in dealing with the issue, but he does believe that, th- that in this case, the Bible itself brings us uh, close to an answer as we are likely to get. Again, yeah. uh, it, it, th- this is a, a, a outpouring of God's revelation uh, to us, to, to humanity, to his people, to the remnant, to his church. And so uh, we're going to want to seek the answer diligently um, uh, w- within Scripture. And so uh, let's figure out what Scripture says about these things and see if we can find the answer. And so... <clears throat> You know, people don't use the Bible. They use these various philosophical approaches. Um, perhaps out of conviction, he says that the Bible cannot help very much. The the other reason, he says, why people often uh, object to dealing with the problem of evil from Scripture is that simply they don't believe Scripture is God's Word. Right. The process, you know, process theologians and thinkers say that if we deny God's supreme power and total sovereignty, then we can solve the problem of evil. Evil exists because God is not fully able to prevent it. So there it is, right? There's the uh, answer if you don't believe the Bible and what it teaches. He says such uh, revisions of scriptural teaching always lose more than they gain. And perhaps we can solve the problem of evil simply by denying God's sovereignty. He's not in control, and so therefore that's why we have evil. He says this non-sovereign approach to God or this non-sovereign God really is just an idol, and it's um, it's an idol of uh, conventional wisdom and not the absolute personality of Christianity. Right. So he wants to dig into the Bible to show what it has to say about evil, and he doesn't want to take, you know, this process theologian's easy way out by denying the character of God that's portrayed in the Bible in an attempt to uh, solve the problem of evil because if God can't deal with evil, if he's not sovereign, if he's not powerful enough, then we have no guarantee that evil will ever be dealt with. And now we're in a worse uh, situation than we found ourselves at first. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, we see this with uh, a kind of uh, philosopher, Christian philosophers with inerrancy. It's one thing to not believe in inerrancy, but it's another thing to just say, well, um, it, it's really hard for me to, to, uh, want to focus everything that I could possibly say. So I'm just going to give over inerrancy and say, uh, listen, I don't even want to discuss it. Let, let's say that I don't believe it. And we'll, we'll just go from there because uh, it's such an easy target for for uh, the other side to attack on is, okay, you have to say that uh, this book is 100% perfect and everything it says. So I'm going to ask you about uh, names of places and, and uh, uh, um, you know, mixed fibers and eating pork and shellfish and all those things. <laughs> Uh, uh, so th- it's really hard and I don't want to do that. So I'll just give it over and, and have this be kind of, uh, uh, an easy out for me. So, 
Um, it's one thing not to believe in errancy, but to just give it over for the sake of convention uh, is, seems to be um, kind of a, uh, it tends to lie about what, what you actually believe. <laughs> 